Hello, everybody. And welcome to this presentation marking National Drone Safety Awareness Week for the FAA uh, and taking the time to learn about reinventing yourself for the drone economy, and specifically aquiline drones and flight to the future program and how those can be used to not only greatly enhance safety of uh, commercial UAV operations, um, but also um, give virtually anybody uh, who is willing uh, the opportunity to go ahead and enter the commercial UAV sector. A little bit of background about myself. I'm a former airline pilot. I had a 20 year career in uh, aviation, I flew a variety of aircraft, I spent many years uh, as a captain at Express Jet Airlines flying the Embraer 145, and most recently flew the uh, 747 for Atlas Air uh, before coming here to Aqualine Drones. I've gone ahead and uh, prepared a PowerPoint presentation for today. I'm gonna go ahead and do a screen share and uh, go through it. And uh, at the end, we'll open it up to questions. Okay, Aqualine Drones and the Flight to the Future, Reinventing Yourself for the Drone Economy. A uh, little bit of background about Aqualine Drones. Uh, we are first and foremost an airline. We uh, not only bring an aviation mindset to commercial UAV operations, training, maintenance, uh, and the like, uh, but we are also a Part 135 airline. That uh, makes us one of just four companies uh, that operate drones and R-135 airlines. The others, uh, most notably, of course, being Amazon, Google, and uh, UPS. So we're in a very, very small group. And it's in a very, very important group that uh, sets us aside. Aqualine Drones was conceived of about five years ago uh, by our CEO and founder, Barry Alexander. He's the uh, gentleman on the left of me there, uh, waving in front of the 7-4 in uh, Anchorage. Uh, Barry has a long history in aviation. Um, he was a commercial helicopter pilot, a and uh, and uh, uh, airline captain um, at uh, Express Chat and also 747 pilot at Western Global and, uh, and most recently Atlas Air. He's also a serial entrepreneur. His uh, first business was starting an air ambulance company in uh, the Caribbean. Um, he's also worked on several businesses um, uh, in addition to that as well, founded several, several businesses. Uh, about five years ago, when Barry was traveling the uh, world as a, cap, as a pilot, um, he quickly learned, noticed that uh, commercial UAVs, although they didn't really exist in any significant uh, quantity in the U.S., um, were experiencing large-scale deployment and vetting uh, in large parts of the world. Uh, specifically in Asia, uh, Middle East, some of Europe, and uh, Australia. And the reason why uh, commercial UAVs weren't uh, being used in any significant way here in the U.S. was because of the regulation uh, that existed. So knowing that, that that regulation would someday fall, he used his time to vet the industry, uh, learn how UAVs were being used, what the capabilities were of the technology, what the limitations were, and also build a world-class team. Although a lot of us here at Aqualine are uh, aviators, um, you also have uh, entrepreneurs, uh, system engineers, IT gurus, uh, and business strategists, as well as distinguished uh, military personnel. Our chief strategic advisor uh, is General Brooks Bash. Uh, he's retired three-star uh, Air Force General. Uh, so he used to build this team, and, uh, and during that time, uh, Part 107 came along about four years ago, uh, and the commercial industry in the U.S. was for the first time allowed to breathe. We launched um, out of incubation uh, almost two years ago. It was the early part of January 2019, and we've made some very bold moves and grown very, very quickly in that short period of time uh, to where we are now as uh, ranked as the fastest uh, drawing, growing drone company uh, in the entire United States. 
Um, Aqualine is not just an airline, it's not just a drone service provider, um, it is a complete ecosystem. Uh, we have our own proprietary cloud that was built from the ground up, manages every aspect of the drone. Uh, we also have domestic manufacturing presence uh, right here in Connecticut. Uh, and of course, uh, Flight to the Future training program and the world's first drone on demand app uh, that we have built ourselves from the ground up. But why now for commercial UAV operations? Um, you're seeing a lot of people get into commercial UAV operations because of the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, specifically airline pilots, uh, uh, one of the largest groups. And also we're seeing people in other hard hit sectors, uh, hospitality um, and others where there might either be outright unemployed or underemployed, where they've seen a significant cut in their hours and their overall uh, wages. Also, the COVID-19, for the first time, has been allowing drones to get some positive press. Uh, prior to COVID, uh, virtually any news article uh, or story that you saw involved something bad that happened with a drone. Somebody closed down an airport, somebody was using it to violate another person's privacy. Um, there was a scare because, because they get too close to uh, aircraft with passengers and the likes. Uh, because of COVID, uh, you're seeing now press with them being used for contactless delivery, uh, going ahead and helping disinfecting stadiums and, and other things. So the public's opinion for the first time is starting to open up to allowing drones um, to be deployed in the airspace and in their communities in, in a meaningful fashion. Um, as I said, the drone industry is nascent. A lid has been kept on it. Um, for the better part of uh, 10 years, what well, was deployed the rest of the world um, because of the regulation. 107 opened that up just a little bit. And for the first time you saw commercially viable um, uh, usage uh, 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 here in the US. Um, so in that short period of time of uh, just shy of four years or right at four years, it's grown from zero to $20 billion a year just in the US. Uh, and that's Forbes, uh, Forbes estimate. And Forbes also estimates that in the next few years, it's going to double to over 40 billion. Um, I think that is an overly conservative estimate. When Forbes wrote that article, um, they were not even aware of Aqualine drones, flight to the future and drone on demand yet. Uh, but even just using their number, um, going from a 20, nothing to a $20 billion industry and then a $40 billion industry in, other, in under 10 years is extraordinarily rare, exceedingly rare. Um, there's also been very well documented, particularly over the past 12 months, that with this type of explosive growth, there is a shortage, a major shortage of properly trained and equipped pilots. Uh, what do I mean by properly trained and equipped? Uh, it is extremely easy, the bar has been set very, very low, uh, to get your commercial drone pilot license, your Part 107 license. Um, it doesn't take much, it takes almost nothing if you're already a licensed uh, pilot, private pilot or airline pilot. Um, so you have some people who are well-trained, some people who aren't trained at all. Um, you've got different levels of insurance that people are carrying. Most of the drones, 70 to 90% of them were manufactured overseas and were purchased off, off the shelf from box stores. Um, so you've got a real you know, um, um, patchwork out there. And even with that, um, the number of people who are qualified to do the jobs are, are in uh, severe shortage. Um, so the time is ripe to go ahead and standardize this, to professionalize it, to bring an aviation mindset to what is in fact aviation, not gadgetry. Uh, and that's where um, Aqualine comes in. Flight to the future, okay. Flight to the future is the training portion of a larger project called Drone on Demand. Drone on Demand is the very first time in the world that anybody has taken the gig economy model, the Uber model and applied it to professional um, enterprise level drone solutions or any type of drone solution for that matter. Yeah, it's a collection of carefully tailored courses supported by an online curriculum and business formation recipe <clears throat> that allow you to start your own professional unmanned aerial vehicle business. Be your own boss, have your own hours, 
chance to get out of unemployment, leave the present and reinvent yourself for the high technology future. Okay, flight to the future is not just training to pass the exam or even learning how to fly a drone beyond that. It is a complete ecosystem and turnkey solution to self-actualization, to owning your own business and being able to earn immediately upon completion of the program a, a very significant enviable income. Uh, our pilots earn a minimum of $300 a job. That's $150 an hour with a minimum of two hours billable. Um, it, is a, it is a real chance to earn a six-figure income uh, working just part of the day. So what's included? Of course, the drone pilot training and certification course, our mind-expanding journeys. Those are our interactive modules. <clears throat> that will teach you how to use our complete cloud solution. To, um, we'll teach you a specific solution to master. Uh, we register a business for you, not a franchise, your own business. We give you insurance for free with for a year, full subscription of all of the software for free for a year. <clears throat> and we'll also offer you the option of finance your hardware. So there's no upfront costs. And of course, Flight to the Future graduates are the only ones that have access to the jobs from the Drone On Demand Services app. It is an exclusive, uh, it is their exclusive purview because they're the only ones that have been trained on it and vetted. That's a four-step program. Step one is simply getting trained and licensed by the FAA. This is a bit more involved if you're a so-called ab initio, if you don't have a pilot's license already or a drone pilot's license already, uh, but that's fine. <clears throat> we are gonna teach you everything that you need in an easy to understand format to make sure that you pass the test and actually go well beyond those testing standards so that you have everything that you need as far as knowledge to be safe and compliant when you go out in the field. Um, it, this step is, is really streamlined uh, for people who already have aviation experience, specifically a pilot's license or a 107 license. Um, but like I said, it goes well beyond the test uh, and gives you everything that you need to ensure safety and compliance. This is a short video uh, that describes just step one of the four step program. And so you can see exactly what you can expect. Please enjoy. Prepare for takeoff in three, two, one. The drone industry is currently rated at billions of dollars with the expectation of it doubling within the next few years. And Aqualine Drones is one of the nation's fastest growing drone and cloud solutions companies. With Flight to the Future, you are now a part of it all and have real potential to make six figures within your first year of operating your commercial drone company. So then, welcome to the future of aviation. This is step one in the Flight to the Future program. At the completion of this step, you'll have a thorough understanding of drones, aviation, aerodynamics, and the national airspace system, which is essential for safely operating your commercial drone. Along your journey, you'll be introduced to all the key topics that are covered in the FAA's Commercial Drone Pilot Certification Examination, enabling you to successfully get licensed as a professional drone operator. There are two distinct parts in this educational journey. The first part introduces you to drones, how they're made, what technologies are utilized, and the best practices that have emerged in the industry. You'll learn about drone engineering, airframe design, and flight characteristics that are key to understanding the capabilities of your aviation equipment as a future drone operator. The second part of this educational journey focuses on the rules, regulations, and environmental restrictions that define and influence your operational processes and decisions. In particular, you'll learn about the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, and its responsibilities for governing civilian aviation. The future of aviation will integrate manned and unmanned aircraft in the same airspace. It is therefore important that you, 
as a professional unmanned aerial services provider understand the complex ecosystem of airports, traffic controllers, and navigational facilities that make up the national airspace system so you can be prepared to operate safely and efficiently just as manned aircraft pilots do. Throughout the journey, you'll be challenged to demonstrate your knowledge as you progress through the curriculum. Smart assessments at the end of each lesson further consolidate your understanding of the topics, allowing you to optimally benefit from your experience as you progress forward. Each lesson also offers a carefully curated selection of advanced topics related bibliography that students can delve into for a deeper understanding of concepts, technologies, and best practices. For instance, see how the current technologies are being pushed to the limit to deliver autonomous drone operations that are just over the horizon, similar to the situation with driverless cars. Get a glimpse of the complex computer science and mathematics that is being employed to develop new capabilities that have the potential to disrupt the aviation industry. See how drones are evolving rapidly by examining what some of the industry innovators are doing. From heavy lift cargo drones to luxury passenger taxis, aviation is poised for a complete overhaul. By embarking on this educational journey, you are a key contributor for this transformation. Once you've mastered the necessary skills and gained an understanding of the topics presented, you'll sign up to take the FAA certification exam. Aqualine Drones will guide you through that process and after you pass, will assist you in getting certified with the FAA as a licensed commercial drone pilot. This completes step one in your journey and you're well on your way to owning your own drone business. With the skills and knowledge you now possess, along with the FAA certification, you are ready and qualified to continue forward in the flight to the future. Are you ready to launch yourself into the aviation future? Your journey starts now. All right, so that is uh, step one. Uh, from there, you'll quickly move to step two. Like I said, it'll, it'll be a uh, quicker transition for somebody who already has aviation experience, but very, very manageable for all. <clears throat> At the end of step one, you're fully licensed, if you weren't already. And step two is learning the proprietary AD cloud. Okay, It's essentially our software suite that manages every aspect of the drone mission planning, mission execution, and uh, data, data capture. Learn how to use the AD command and control module to set up and execute UAV missions. The AD cloud, like I said, manages every aspect of your mission. That's redundant. There's a nice infographic to show how everything ties into the cloud. And it all ties in wirelessly in real time via an LTE uh, data connection or uh, a Wi-Fi uh, connection. And if you're in an area that doesn't have either of those, all of the computing is done on the drone itself via edge computing and all of the data is stored on the drone uh, and it can be uploaded once it's within range of a signal. So it starts out uh, with your mission planning right there on your cloud-based dashboard, which is uh, accessible by any type of browser. You'll have all the information you need to begin planning. Starts with your uh, free sources, all aggregated and easy to use uh, uh, format. That's things like your, your NOTAMs, your weather, your METARs, your TAFs, <clears throat> your flight restrictions. Um, you're able to go ahead and access the FAA's computer systems uh, via Lance to get approval to fly in controlled airspace, uh, oftentimes within a matter of a few seconds. Um, right up to your mission um, uh, execution, many of the missions are completely autonomous. You're simply deploying the drone and collecting it. And the others are heavily, heavily automated uh, or augmented with the, uh, uh, with the command and control. Um, all of the data, like I said, is uh, stored uh, through the cloud. So you can spend all of your time flying. You don't have to spend any time stitching the data together or editing it into something the customer wants. 
that's all handled by us in the back end. Um, so all your time spent flying and earning, you don't have to go back home and sit in front of the computer and do any type of uh, stitching or manipulation. Um, every aspect of the, um, uh, of the drone is logged automatically, not just the hours and cycles on the drone itself, um, but also on all the critical components, battery, rotors, sensor, motors, you know, everything like that. And they're flagged individually under a preventative maintenance schedule, similar to a modern air aircraft uh, for replacement or overhaul <coughs> before they fail, not at the point of failure, which greatly increases uh, safety and, uh, and reliability. From there, you'll go to step three. Step three is where you'll have a choice to make as far as what commercial solution you want to um, master, to specialize in. One of them is included with the program. Uh, and uh, you always have the option to go back and work additional modules after the program um, if, if you choose. Um, the six that we have there to choose from now represent a little over 90% or right around 90% of the commercially viable um, UAV solutions that are allowed under the current technology and regulation. Videography, survey and mapping, perimeter security, asset inspection, livestock and wildlife monitoring, crop and vegetative monitoring. It is strong demand that exists uh, in general across the entire country for commercial UAV solutions. As far as what type of solution is in demand, it can vary somewhat. And the most um, stark example is when you're in New York City, um, in Ma Manhattan. Not much demand for livestock and wildlife monitoring or crop and vegetative monitoring, but a whole lot of everything else. Um, likewise, if you're in a rural part of the Midwest where it's nothing but farmland, not a whole lot of need for asset inspection. But of course, everything else is very much in demand. Um, well before you get to step three, everybody going through the program has access to our, our research, our internal research, market research. And you can see county by county what demand there is for each of those six services. Um, so you will have no problem making a competent choice when you get to that point. Uh, and then we go to step four. Step four, we teach you business 101, basics of accounting, customer management, et cetera. We go ahead and register an LLC on your behalf for you. You own that LLC 100%. It is not a franchise. You don't have to pay any franchising fees. You don't have to use Aqualine branding and you don't have to buy Aqualine products to support it you get a free year worth of insurance. Insurance alone at the level that is necessary for these types of solutions. It's a $10 million insurance policy. Costs outside of Aqualine, minimum of $2,300 a year. We're including it for free for the first year in the purchase price, the enrollment fee of uh, uh, Flight to the Future. Program costs, $7.99 if you're already a pilot, whether it be part 107 or uh, part 61 or ATP. Uh, and $9.99 for ab initio folks, say the people who have uh, no prior aviation experience. Loan, the insurance alone makes it well worth it. Um, we also give you a year free of the cloud that you just learned. And we onboard you to receive steady uh, supply of jobs through the drone on demand app. Let's talk a little bit more about the app. I said before, the app is the first time in the world it hasn't existed before we conceived of it and built it, taking the gig economy model and applying it to commercial UAV solutions. There's a lot of reasons why that's so powerful. Um, First and foremost, on your side as the, as a service provider, 
now you can earn a very significant income right out of the box. Um, people who are, are drone service providers now, they're on the cutting edge uh, of, of a high technology business, but there's no way around it. They had to build it a very, very old tried and true way that all businesses have been built up to that point. They had to invest on expensive infrastructure, website, search engine optimization, advertising. They have to build that client base by networking, knocking on doors. They have to do it slowly over time and they have to nurture that. As such, in order to build a successful business, your business has to come first. If you're courting a client right before you go on vacation, they give you a call and say they need you there tomorrow to do a job. Well, now that vacation is going to have to be put off because if you tell them, sorry, I can't do that, you're probably not going to get a second chance. Um, so the business is always first and foremost. With the, the gig economy model, you simply turn on the app and the jobs are already there. And you select the ones that are right for you. They're at the right time that pay the right amount. And the other ones you leave and somebody else takes it. When you're doing something else, whether that's family time, whether that's working another job, whether that's working classes somewhere else, you simply don't turn it on. Um, those customers are still going to get supplied uh, by somebody else. And you're not, you haven't lost anything other than the money you would have earned. So it's a fully scalable business that you can scale up as big as you want, or even pause it completely at a moment's notice without any repercussions. Also pays extremely well. We're not talking about getting paid $30 here to take some pictures for a realtor. Okay? These are enterprise level solutions. We want to recruit and retrain a high, retain a high caliber pilot. And the only way you do that is by making sure that they get paid what they're worth. You want these people to be aviators, not, uh, you know, not, not hobbyists. They can certainly start out as hobbyists. We turn them into aviators. You earn a minimum of $150 an hour, two hours per job. Frequently you'll earn more. You may always earn more. The AI is always seeking to use real-time conditions with supply and demand to charge as much as possible. And that money gets passed on to the pilot. Um, minimum two hours per job, so that's $300 per job min. You do the math, you do two jobs a day, you're getting paid for four hours. You're likely working less than four hours. At $600 a day, work five days out of the week, and we'll say you work 50 weeks out of a 52-week year. That's $150,000 for true part-time work and working in aviation. By going through a program that takes only a matter of months and virtually nothing invested on the front end. There isn't anything else out there that I'm aware of, and I've, and I've looked, that offers anything like that. Even if you just want to learn how to cut hair, you're looking at an excess of a $10,000 program at a trade school, and at the end of it, all you get is that certificate. You still got to go out, you got to rent a chair, you got to build up that customer base, and no matter how good you are, you're never going to come close to that six-figure income. And that's just how it is. So this is aviation. We, we treat the pilots like they're aviators. We treat the equipment like they're aircraft because they are. And we hold it to a very high professional standard. From the customer standpoint, now they can order up a drone very intuitively, very quickly, in a little more than a minute once they have an account set up. And they don't have to talk to anybody. And they're assured, because of our brand, the pilot showing up is properly trained they're properly licensed, they're properly insured, that their equipment is American made and properly maintained. Very, very powerful. And they're gonna be getting charged a little bit more than half what everybody else is charging them. Those sole proprietors out there and service providers, they currently charge in excess of $300 an hour. We're gonna build these services out for about <coughs> $170 an hour. And some people say, well, I'm gonna be making half what I can make elsewhere. Well, no, you're not. You're actually going to be making a lot more. The, the customers are going to be paying about half and you're going to be making significantly more than what other people are. Not just because you don't have to spend the time and the money to build that infrastructure, but because you have a steady diet of jobs where you can do two or potentially more a day 
Whereas people who are currently out there running their businesses usually only do a handful of jobs a week. So extremely powerful all around and very beneficial for both the customer uh, who's ordering the job and the pilot who is working the job will be you. And here's a, an infographic that shows the cloud and how it all ties in and uh, works together. This is an expansion of what we've talked about. It's all done wirelessly. And to understand what your experience would be as far as interacting the app, you can think of what an Uber driver experience is. There's a, there's a whole lot of similarities. Um, chief difference will be, unlike with Uber, where you kind of go out there and drive around or idle and wait for the jobs to pop up. Uh, there is a wait time, a lag here. Uh, initially, it's gonna be three days. We're gonna get it down to about 12 hours or so um, as, uh, as time goes on. Um, so it's not gonna be a situation where you're gonna wake up, you're gonna have to get dressed and charge, have you charged up drone and go out and kind of drive around. If you wanna work on a Thursday, you turn the uh, uh, app on on a Monday or sooner, you see what's out there. You see exactly what's going to hit your bank account, what, when, and where is ente it entails, and you select it, and you go about your business until it's time to do the job. And with that, I wrap up the presentation, and I will open it up to questions. Um, anybody has any questions, if you can go ahead and put that into the uh, Q&A section be very, very helpful. Just go ahead and type it in. And I see Jonathan has a, made a comment. Hello, just started the course earlier this month, informative and engaging. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, Angela, good afternoon. I'm curious about maintenance for the drone, scheduled inspections, average cost for batteries, gear for the drone, et cetera. Thank you. You're welcome, Angela, and great question. <coughs> so of course, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> maintenance is required as it would be any aircraft. <coughs> and ultimately what's gonna happen starting into next year, we're gonna have several regional um, centers, drone showrooms, think of them kind of like an Apple store where the drone can be brought in among other things and you could have, um, have the maintenance done on them. And those are gonna grow in, in number and increase as, as we go on down the line. Um, but most people probably aren't gonna be in the vicinity. So the way it's gonna be handled is when a drone comes up for maintenance or if it has damage out in the field, we will ship you on loaner and you'll ship that back and we'll do the maintenance. If it's anything beyond what's easily serviceable by the customer, um, like changing the props, of course, batteries, you know, something like that. If it requires removal of anything or opening up the shell, we'll handle it. But the most important thing is, if you're not out there earning money, Aqualine's not out there earning money. So we don't want you to be without a drone for any period of time. Um, so we will ship you a loaner, do the work and send it back. Um, you are responsible for the cost, the cost is minimal, especially since you're talking about um, making $300 plus a job. Um, I, I don't have a, a spec sheet for you, but you know we're talking about batteries, we're talking about rotors, things like that. It's not very, very much. Um, what is your ratio of, what is the ratio of train pilots to job opportunities offered? Very good question. It varies on the market. Depends on the market that you're operating in, okay? Right now, we've got the first group of people that are going through the program. They started it uh, back in the middle of September. Um, anybody who were to sign up today would be, you know, would be included in that first cadre, even though you're starting a little bit later. You'd be among the first who are going out and working, uh, working these jobs. Um, so right now, we're, we're training several thousand pilots or a couple thousand pilots and then putting them out across the country. Going into next year, we're going to be actively monitoring every market that we have pilots. Um, actually, the AI, AI is going to be monitoring that. And based on the patterns that develop as far as the number of jobs that are out there, 
and the number of hours the average pilot in that market is providing uh, as far as the service, if it detects a situation where there's a potential for there to be too many pilots chasing too, too few opportunities, um, we are going to actively block, we're gonna wait list entrance, entry of new pilots into that market until the demand increases to a point where it can support another pilot. So that's a long answer. The short answer is it varies market by market and there are active uh, uh, guards in place uh, to prevent there being a saturation of pilots relative to the number of jobs. Uh, but right now it's part of the first group of people that are going through, you're getting two very, very big benefits. Uh, one is um, since you're among the first, we don't have to worry about saturation quite yet. So you're getting guaranteed access to your market of choice. And you're also getting the program um, at a greatly reduced price. Um, it costs us about $4,000 for every student that goes through the program up front. We start to recapture that money when you go out and earn significant money through the Drone On Demand app. When we go into next year uh, and, pe and people are, um, are out there earning 150 plus dollars an hour, we're gonna send the press over to you to talk about your experience and about what you're earning. And once that happens, the price of the program, the early part of next year, is gonna go up to $3,000 or higher with a payment plan. And we're gonna start actively um, assessing each new entrance to make sure that their market is available. Uh, can you use an existing LLC to operate anonymous attendee? Yes, you can, you absolutely can. That's entirely up to you. We don't get, Aqualine doesn't get any benefit from the LLC um, other than adding professionalism to the brand, uh, assurance to the customer. Um, that is completely your, your benefit, right? So, and if you wanna use an existing LLC, well, you've still got the tax benefits and you still have the liability protection. So we're happy enough with that. And we can still represent you as being an independent business person. Um, so yes. Hello, is, is there a lead fee? Uh, Jose, I gonna guess that you mean an upfront cost and that would be the enrollment fee, Jose, uh, which is $7.99 for uh, somebody who already is a pilot, either airline pilot, part 61 pilot or 107 pilot. And it's $9.99 every, for everyone else. That's the enrollment fee to go through the course. And there are no other upfront costs at all uh, up to including, we'll send you the drone and finance it for no money down. Um, the idea is that once you do pay that initial enrollment fee, you don't have to reach into your bank account or your credit card or anything else like that. Again, anything else, any ongoing costs that come up will just be taken off the money that you earn through the drone on demand app until it's satisfied. Uh, John, I'm currently going through part one. I believe this is self-paced. So when I'm ready, then go to part two, et cetera. Correct, John. Absolutely. <clears throat> Depending on when you started, if you were part of that September class, people who started in September are experiencing what we call soft rollout. Uh, we did it for a number of reasons. Uh, the, the, the main one being that we can trap um, any issues that people are having because of the way the content is presented or any errors that are in it before it goes out to the masses. So we got this ongoing feedback kind of thing. Anybody who signs up now is going to get access to um, everything that's been already been released uh, right away. Um, and as those other modules go, you know, rolling out every every couple of weeks or so, by the time you work through everything that's already out there, you're really not even going to notice the soft rollout. So that's really something that kind of really applied more to the people that started a couple of months ago. But yes, it's all online and it's self-paced. Um, I am French, can I work for you? Yes, <laughs> yes you can. Um, send me a resume. Um, you can send it to info at aqualinedrones.com BF. And if you could put a cover letter on there as well, I appreciate it. Um, but we, um, it's kind of funny and this, I, this may be why you're asking. Uh, we, we partnered, uh, announced it publicly uh, last month with a company called Drone Volt. <clears throat> They're an established uh, manufacturer and uh, designer of drones in Europe. We have exclusive manufacturing rights to several of their products. All of them are gonna be manufactured uh, here in Connecticut uh, and under the Aqualine brand. Um, so we have a very close working relationship with the French. Uh, ben, is the program at my own pace or time or is there a certain set group cohort that I'm moving through it? 
<clears throat> it is at your own own pace and at your own time. We were originally going to do hard start dates of uh, the first of every month. Uh, then it became apparent that we were going to partner with Drone Vault, um, and the reason why we uh, staggered it was we didn't want to outstrip our, our drone production capability uh, with the drone vote deal. Uh, that's no longer an issue. So now it's open and it's essentially rolling enrollment. Um, not essentially, that's what it is. So if you sign up today, you'll get access as early as this afternoon, maybe as late as a, a couple of days because we batch them, I think, three times a week with everybody new who comes in. Uh, but, but once you have that, you're off to the races. You can go ahead and start working. How does the payment structure work? Joseph Antonelli. Uh, so, like I said, it's a minimum of 150 an hour, uh, two hours per job, minimum. So if you show up there for 30 hours, 30, 30 minutes, you're gonna pay, you're gonna get paid minimum $300. Um, and frequently it'll be more. So th the way it works is Aqualine has, has an agreement, essentially a contract with the customer uh to have the services done at, at a certain price and we also have a separate agreement with the service provider the pilot that we are going to pay them x amount for that and the difference between the two is what aqualine keeps and that again fluctuates but it's roughly 20 percent so when you see that a job is going to pay you 300 dollars, that's what's going to hit your bank account unless you have a you know you have to make a, a payment for a uh, for the drone for the month or something like that um, you don't have to do any type of calculation. Uh, BF, we already answered that. I think some of these are, let's see. How's, uh, yeah, BF, I just answered. Yes, you can work for us. Um, Guillermo, uh, any age limit in regard to becoming a UAV, UAV pilot? Another excellent question. No, the FAA, unlike for an air transport pilot, partner part 21 has no upper age limit at all. You don't have to take a medical either. You just have to self-certify that you are of adequate health uh, to safely uh, fly the drone. Um, you can be 16 years old um, to get your commercial part 107 license. Um, that's the minimum age requirement. And for us, you can go through the program at any age, but before you start cert, um, accepting jobs through the Drone On Demand app, you have to be at least 18 years old, but no upper age requirement at all. In fact, we've got several retired airline pilots. Uh, let's see, age limit. Does the training include cover state specific requirements, certifications? Uh, no, there are no state specific uh, requirements or certifications. It's all under the auspices of the FAA. Um, there are re some regional, you know, regulations and such, uh, and that's uh, that's part that, that is included in the course as well. So, as far as what they are, uh, let's see if I can find an easier way to do that. Let's see, let's see what's the average? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's try this again. Um, uh, let's, bear with me guys here. Okay, great. Uh, it seems like the course is behind schedule. What is the projection now for when steps two and four will be able to accomplish and when will the service be available to the public? Ronald. Okay, excellent question, Ronald. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's behind schedule. Um, we did change and do the uh, uh, soft rollout. And Ronald, it sounds like you might be going through the course now. Um, and if you are, you'll notice that the materials were rolling out like every week now. Um, and that's because we've taken, you know, a lot of the feedback, we've incorporated it, worked all the way through to the future modules. So there's much less, less adjustment that needs to be made uh, going forward. Uh, drone on demand services app that is scheduled to launch late, um, uh, late winter, early spring. Uh, that was originally planned to, to launch before the end of the year. We have had logistic issues because of COVID. We've had some people get sick. Uh, we've had issues as far as coordinate, coordinating with people who work in other countries because they're not able to travel. <clears throat> so that has caused 
a bit of an issue uh, on our end. Um, so, you know, that's fine. But right now, everything is expected to launch because we've made adjustments for all of these, these challenges that were kind of thrown upon all of us um, at, uh, you know, late, late uh, winter, early spring. So you're looking at around March, um, step two through four. Um, they're going to be rolling out. We're going to start working on step two as far as availability to the public here within, within the next several weeks. Um, all of step one is going to be wrapped up here in the next week or two. So at the end of the day, um, you can expect to work through all of the modules and be done a few weeks before uh, the Drone on Demand app goes live. So we want every, obviously everybody or a significant portion of people to go ahead and go through the program. They need to go ahead and get equipped fully onboarded, all the business registered and everything like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and activate just like what Uber did, the Drone On Demand Services app will go live for them in the markets that have pilots. Um, I, you know, I for one, I had the Uber app on my phone two years before my local market ever got Uber. Um, and when I turn it on, I'm just saying no drivers in the area. It's gonna be the same thing for the customers. It's not gonna be switched on full functionality <clears throat> unless there's actually people within the area to fly the missions. So great question. And I hope that answered it. What is the price range of your drones? Okay. So the drones that we're talking about now for these types of, um, uh, for the types of missions that uh, 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 use cases that you, you can be trained on are gonna be covered uh, by our Hercules II. Uh, which was designed by Drone Vault. They've been selling it across the world for over three years. A lot of flight hours on it, fully vetted. Commercial grade, uh, robust quadcopter. This one is equipped with a 6K Sony camera on a uh, three axis gimbal. And uh, redundant parts, uh, critical components. It's shielded against uh, precipitation and dust. Um, it's also um, shielded against uh, electromagnetic interference. So it can do inspections of high tension power lines. This with a full case, I think it's five batteries, controller, everything, and full functionality tied to the cloud with edge computing. It's 4,000 for the drone. This particular camera is right around 500. So you're looking at about a $4,500 investment for the hardware. Um, like everything else, you're not obligated to buy the drone uh, at all or buy our drone at all, but it is a closed ecosystem. So at the, at the end of the course, if you want to receive the jobs with the Drone On Demand app, then you will need the hardware. Um, realizing that $4,000, $4,500 is a very significant investment for a lot of people, we give you the option of financing it for no money down. And if you do that, um, the uh, if you do that, the um, we'll take 10% of the jobs that you complete through Drone On Demand app each month to satisfy the payment. So if you stretch it out for the longest period of time that we're gonna offer, which is two years, you're looking at uh, approximately a $200 a month payment. So taking 10%, we take 10% of the first 2000 that you earn for that month. And then for the rest of the month, you, you, you would keep 100%. Um, we do have other drones like this one, this baby's 50,000. Um, very, very special uses for that, but that's outside of the discussion. This is for like military applications and the like. Uh, but for, the, for this, you're looking at a $4,000, $4,500 investment. I checked the Part 135 certificate holders list. Is the certificate name under Aqualine Drones? It is under Van Nuys Airways. It is Ver Van Nuys Airways doing business as Aqualine Drones. And that's because of the way we, we went ahead, rather than building up organically, we went ahead and acquired it, purchased it, purchased it about almost a year ago. Um, and now it's a, it's a DBA. So if you want to look up Van Nuys, you'll see our certificate. Um, George, have you uh, established costs for second year of ADOD use? Yes. Will second year insurance be established to you as well? And what's the cost? Fantastic questions. Yes, we have done all of that. Uh, second year insurance does not have to be through us. We really don't care. We just care that you're insured. Um, insurance is extraordinarily expensive in the open market. It costs more than I pay to insure my car. Insurance is a minimum of $2,300 um, if you go through AIG or Global Aerospace or, or anybody else out there that's offering it for a $10 million policy. So at the end, you can go through them or you can go through us. We have our own in-house insurance. 
we're going to charge you $1,400 a year, um, significantly less. So you probably go through us. And the reason why we're able to do that is because we can attest to your training. We can attest to your hardware that it's being flown compliantly. That's not exceeding limitations. That's being maintained properly. Um, you know, all of it. Um, and, and other insurance companies out there can't. It's really the wild west out there. Um, you've got people who may or may not be licensed. People who may or may not be insured. And you've got a lot of people who are going out there. They're getting their 107 certificate. And then they're going to a box store buying a drone, not knowing anything about it. And they're going in and crashing. Um, and because the 107, as far as the FAA, FAA is concerned, to pass that 107 exam is so, so minimal. Um, it, it just, it really, it's just setting up for failure. And there's a very, very high loss rate out in the open market. We've gone ahead and mitigated all of that or completely removed it. So that's why we're able to offer the insurance for, for so, so little. Um, as far as the cloud, uh, minimal charge for cloud after the year, $20 a month. It's like $250, to $200, $250 a year. So 20 and some change a month and, uh, and that's it. So there is, there is no gotcha at the end of that first year. And there's gotta be an easier way to do this. Uh, okay, another great question. Keith Glover, regarding cost of commercial solutions, what's the cost of additional courses? If you go back and run through just step three, it's 200 bucks. Um, the only thing that we have, you can do all six if you want, but we ask, we, we don't enforce, but we ask that if you're gonna go back and rerun through course three, that you first become proficient in whatever it is that you decided to learn the first time around before you go back and take on more. Anonymous, I live in a pretty rural area and it's the wild west. Almost no one flies with a part 107 certificate. Towns, resorts, and realtors all fly illegally because no one wants to pay a 107 pilot. How would AD generate interest or help me generate interest in your area? Fantastic. Okay, first of all, anybody who knows better shouldn't do that, obviously. Um, but, you know, resorts, realtors, I certainly understand. But municipalities, resorts, boy, they are really taking a chance. Um, so I'll tell you any, any type of commercial construction project or when you're working with Liberty Mutual or AIG or anybody else, you know, they, they do know the difference. That's number one. Number two, there is a tremendous amount of education that's being taken part, that's, that's happening right now across the country as far as safe legal drone use. And we're a big part of that conversation. You Google Aqualine drones through Google and just click the news tab, you'll see the tremendous amount of press that's been written about us in the last year or so. Um, that is only going to continue. It's been accelerating. In a few weeks here, we're about to do a national, nationwide campaign about the Drone On Demand Services app and all of the reasons why that is not acceptable and extremely dangerous and not worth saving, you know, a hundred bucks or $150 to get it to, to, to kind of che to cheat the system to operate illegally uh, is, you know, people are going to learn exactly why that's so risky. And the FAA is on the cusp of really putting the hammer down on that too. So I totally understand exactly what you're talking about. That, that points to why the insurance is so expensive, among other things. It also points to why people are very distrustful of drones, because a lot of times that sort of stuff makes the news because you have a undesirable outcome, shall we say. Um, so all of that's coming to an end. That's part of the marketing uh, push that, that we're launching. Um, and at the end of the day, in a very short period of time, people are going to know the difference. And the FAA is going to step up their enforcement. Yep, brother. I started the course in September was the last I saw. I started the course in September. I'm also new going through the non-pilot section. Once I pass the FA 107, is there a schedule for the hands-on learning with an experienced drone pilot? Okay, David. So for everybody, the way the program was designed was a hands-on training portion of it where, because everything is run through the cloud, through the command and control. So you're never actually really flying the drone. You're telling the computer what you want the drone to do. And then the computer is telling the drone. So you can do that anywhere. You can do it remotely. You don't have to have eyes on the drone. 
and do it through the cloud. Uh, so the, the, the cloud was to be flown most likely here in Connecticut and the student can do it from anywhere under the, under the guidance of an instructor. The FAA shut it down, won't let us do it uh, because that, that runs afoul of the uh, line of sight uh, requirement. So the plan going forward uh, for everybody is to run through all four modules um, and at the end, the last step will, when you choose to purchase a drone, we'll ship you the drone. You're going to deploy it in your area in, a, in an area that you decide, you know, ascertain is, is acceptable, is safe. And an instructor is going to monitor in real time <coughs> all the telemetry um, and the camera and have you fly a pattern, essentially a, a check ride. You go ahead and do that satisfactorily, land, and then the uh, then you're checked off, and that's the final step, and you can begin um, earning money through the drone on demand services app. In addition to that, uh, there is simulation that is uh, built in to uh, step three. Uh, it's a full fledged uh, simulator uh, that you operate uh, from your browser that will help you um, develop those those kind of stick and rudder skills, so to speak. Um, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> everything is automated. Uh, highly automated. You've got sense and void technology and, and, and all of the rest. Um, so just like a, a commercial airline pilot, you're really removing the human out of it and those stick and rudder skills become uh, less crucial. So that's, that's what the original plan was, David. That's why we had to change it. We were forced to, and that's what the plan is going forward. Uh, Jerome, uh, one of your drones available to be purchased. I am already in the program and would like to start practicing flight maneuvers. I am a pilot and love the ground course. Thank you for the feedback, Jerome. Very, very nice to hear. And uh, I believe we're talking about pre-ordering. Every, everything's moving very, very quickly uh, because the these are going to actually start rolling off the line, not in France, but for the first time here in Connecticut uh, sometime before the end of the year. <clears throat> so we're talking about going ahead and having people pre-order in a very short period of time. Don't hold me to anything. So I'm not going to say, um, I will say that we are, I don't think a decision has been rendered. I don't think we've even really had, had too much of a discussion, but we're hesitant, we're very hesitant to, to ship a $4,000 drone with no money down to somebody who hasn't fully completed the program yet. So I would say um, in, in all likelihood, you shouldn't expect taking delivery of the drone before you've gone ahead and finished step four. Maybe we'll allow if you write us a if you send us a check for the full amount. Maybe we'll maybe maybe that'll be a different thing. But that's not something we've waited in, wait in yet. Uh, Eric, how are the new courses coming along? I caught up to lesson one point eight. Uh, went ahead, got my part one hundred seven, completed on my own. Like you said, very easy for a current pilot. Excited to continue. Awesome, Eric. That is awesome. And like I said. <clears throat> uh, well, I may or not have said, but uh, all of uh, part one is going to be completed within the next few weeks, next couple of weeks. Uh, then we're quickly going into two, three, and four um, and expect to have everything finished up, you know, winter. Um, and and then, then we get you out in the field. Uh, Jonathan, what are the largest size drones? If you're traveling to an opportunity, it probably would be practical to have a vehicle that could transport. Okay, so for these types of missions, Jonathan, we're, we're not talking about this drone or, or any of the other ones. We're talking about this uh, quadcopter. Um, this is fully assembled. It doesn't collapse any smaller than this. It comes in a hard like toolbox case. It's fully padded. You don't need a special vehicle. You can throw it in the back, back seat of a you know, two-door sedan if you had to. Um, that, that, that's really not an issue. Not, not for the jobs that we're talking about with Flight to the Future. Chris, uh, how soon will drone on demand service be available for pilots to take jobs going through the program? Okay, Chris, I think we answered that a couple of times. You're looking at uh, late winter, early spring. Uh, Julio, I am currently a marine surveyor and I'm curious if you'll be providing boat drones to do multi-beam and side scan style surveys. Okay, so that, Julio, is certainly a use case that we, we can do. Um, that would uh, make use of our Pensar camera, which we just obtained the license to manufacture from uh, a company called uh, 
Altura. Um, and uh, that would be on this $50,000 drone. So that's not likely something that you're gonna see uh, immediately as far as offer for the drone on demand app. Um, however, you guys are the ones who are gonna be doing all of our jobs, uh, not just the ones through the drone on demand app. So as we start seeing more and more of these enterprise level solutions, like what you're talking about, um, also think about things like power line inspection or anything that requires any type of badging or special screening above and beyond what you do for flight to the future. When those calls come into Aqualine and we need pilots, we, all, we have a ready pool of pilots. They're you guys that went through flight to the future. So we'll look at who's in the area and we'll look at what type of special skills or training are needed or anything else like that. And we'll contact you and put you on a contract basis. You know, anything that's gonna be ongoing, we'll go ahead and, and negotiate that separately. Um, that's actually a conversation I really get into uh, on these, these types of webinars, but why would we go ahead you know, and, and hire some people off the street to go ahead and do the missions when we already have a pool of thousands of people across the country that have already been vetted and proven themselves and know our software, know our hardware and gone through our program. We'll just get them some specialized training for whatever it is, uh, negotiate, you know, negotiate a contract with them that's acceptable and uh, put you guys out to work. The ones who want to do it, that is. Again, it's all about flexibility and opportunity. Uh, Ozzy. Great name. Retired airline pilot taking the course. Excited about the future of the Aqualine drones. Start in September. Thank you, Ozzy. Very nice thing to say. Anonymous. I'm curious if, I'm curious how many anonymous attendees there are, if it's just like two people. Um, but they're, they're great questions. You shouldn't be anonymous. You ask great questions. Um, I have an ATP pilot license, but my currency expired. What kind of UAV test do I need to take? Excellent, excellent question. Um, Cause this is something I just got clarification on a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> so if you're not current, um, you have to take the full FAA exam, which is fine. It's, gonna, it's not gonna cause you any type of problem to, uh, to take the test. If you are current, you can take an online test that's abbreviated. If you are not current, you have to take the full test, which is a little bit longer, not much but you have to go to an FAA testing center. That's it, it's the only difference. Uh, Andy, excellent program. Thank you, Andy. I'm all in, as you know, Roger, I do. I started at the end of October and would like to know uh, when will the remaining course in part one be complete? Next uh, couple of weeks, Andy. Uh, what is the timing for T3 and four? Like I said, they're gonna roll out for the reasons I said at the beginning of the call. <clears throat> they're going to roll out over the remainder of uh, fall and winter and everything will be wrapped up sometime around March. Uh, and then you can expect to be getting out in the field uh, very shortly after that. John, this is exciting. Thanks, John. It is exciting. It's extremely exciting. You know, to, just to piggyback off of that comment, um, I had a 20 year airline career. I worked in business and sales prior to that, uh, gave that up, stopped the office, working in the office, went to the airlines, got beat up a little bit, but still loved it. Kind of stagnated a little bit at the regionals. Then I got on the 7-4 at Atlas and it just fell in love with aviation all over again. I was having the time of my life and at the pinnacle of my career and only, only a couple of years away from upgrade. And I walked away like that from it all in order to do this. And I, and it wasn't very, it was a very easy decision. It was probably the easiest decision I ever made professionally. And I never, ever regretted it. That's how exciting this is to me. Ricardo, do you recommend us owning a drone so we can uh, have better practice? Some people do that, Ricardo. Um, you know, as a pilot, I gotta tell you, experience it can never be a negative. Um, it's not necessary, it's not required. Um, it, it may help, uh, it, it may help you feel uh, more comfortable. If you wanna do that, it's up to you. Any um, box store quadcopter, um, you know, of, of decent size, you know, not something a little like that, but something roughly this size or a little bit smaller, will we'll give you the same kind of feel of when this is in manual mode. If you wanna do that, that's entirely up to you. Uh, David. By the way, this is a very exciting business model you have. I'm very excited about the possibilities. Thanks, David. Hey, Garrett. 
I know you. When will everything be fully operational jobs be available to select from? Uh, okay, I think we answered that. So you're looking at uh, late winter, early spring. Uh, and for the reasons we went into. Uh, Alfonso, uh, how when do I get actual flight training? Okay, Alfonso, we, we talked about that. That'll come at the very end. There's a lot of simulation that's worked into it in step three. And you can, you can hang out for as long as you need in that simulator. Um, but the FAA kind of shut us down with our original plan. Um, so you'll be flying it at the very end of uh, stage four. Uh, Kazra, uh, is there an age limit for a remote person? Uh, license, no Kazra. Um, you just have to be 16 or older. That's all you need. And if you're gonna work jobs for us, you have to be 18 or older, no upper age limit at all. Anonymous, is it anticipated that ADOD app will have US and state government any submitting job requests? What access permits? Yep, okay, great. That's again, like what we asked. Those types of requests, because it's gonna require special licensing, vetting, badging in some cases, that sort of thing. Um, so, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll, let's go into this. So anybody who's familiar with the ACMI role, uh, world, that's something like Atlas Air operated aircraft maintenance insurance. Um, aircraft crew maintenance insurance, uh, like a charter operation. <clears throat> so a job request comes in from the AD or the app. <clears throat> and that can be done when you have a government entity or an enterprise entity, they can do it through the app or they can go ahead and pick up the phone and call offline. Okay, the AI sees the jobs that are, are fairly standard, you know, inspecting a roof, uh, doing some survey and mapping, inspecting the livestock, something like that sees that, vets it, and automatically puts it out for the drone on demand app. When you have something that's more complicated, um, let's use this example, Florida Power and Light, the Florida, the main or the dis power distribution company for Southern Florida, Southern Central Florida. Um, they're starting um, to use drones to inspect their, their, their power lines and they're not doing it in-house, they're using contractors. Okay, so let's say FBL or somebody else like that calls Aqualine. Well, that's something now that's over an extended period of time. The uh, operators have to have, be, have badges and vests so that the public knows why they're there. They have to have a magnetic decal on their car. They might even have special training requirements, whatever. The AI is going to flag that. They're not going to go ahead and send that right away on the drone on demand app. So that comes to our call center, our flight ops has run just like it, just like a charter airlines flight ops, where we go through, we figure out what assets we have, what we need, and we build a solution, okay? And if that can go ahead and be put and all that can be met by sending it out on the app, then we send it out on the app. If not, then we look at who the Flight to the Future graduates are who work, who, who work on the app uh, and who uh, uh, that are out there that would be good candidates to, to do this job. And then we start contacting you individually and we start, you know, we discuss you know, what we're offering as far as pay, what the job entails, everything else and you either give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down and uh, and that's how we go ahead and crew that so you will have leads generated and jobs um, offered to you uh, i shouldn't say leads you will have jobs that will be presented to you for you to to accept or decline um, that may have been ordered up through the app but as far as the contact you may not see it actually pop up on the app you may get a you may get a call from us directly um, and that is a pretty cool way to handle a complex problem. And the only way we know we could even think about doing that is being airline pilots ourselves and having worked in that environment. Um, James Atkins, uh, what is the battery endurance of the Hercules? Will we need to buy extra batteries? No, you don't need to buy extra batteries. You get five, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. It's whatever it is, it's sufficient. Um, the, these drones, especially when you're looking at a, 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 a uh, quadcopter like this, they haven't innovated in 10 years. Hardware is the hardware. If you're looking to get impressed with the hardware, it's like getting impressed with a wrench at, at Lowe's. What makes this drone powerful is the ecosystem that it's tied to through the cloud. You disconnect that cloud, it's, it's no more impressive or less impressive than anybody else's stuff out there. Um, but there is a spec sheet. I have a spec sheet, or you can just go to Drone Vault's website and see the spec sheet. I think the battery they were using was only 15 minutes. 
Um, we're using a different type of battery, which is going to be, you know, like I said, something like 20 or 30 minutes, whatever it is, but comparable to everybody else's hardware out there uh, of this type anyway. Um, Eric, hello, will the drones be available purchased by the completion of the course? Yes, before the completion of the course. Uh, however, don't expect it to ship until you're done, unless you, unless you pay for the whole thing outright, um, because we want to make sure that we're going to make sure that you have everything you need to, to fly it safely. Uh, Jonathan, besides registering the business, will there be any other business support giving? Landing pages, SEO, advertising. We're going to handle all the advertising, all the branding for the Drone On Demand app. If you want to set up Jonathan's drones, uh, you know that branding is for you. Um, and that brings us to another question, which hasn't been asked yet, but it will be. Uh, what, uh, what, what does it mean to have your own business? <clears throat> You can do all of your jobs through the Drone On Demand app. You can do some of them or you can do none of them. It's completely up to you. If you want to go ahead and get a website and do your own branding, please, please do it. We encourage it. Um, any business that you negotiate on your own uh, for the, outside of the Drone On Demand app, that is your business. You negotiate the price and, and everything else. Um, if you're going to use our, our cloud, our insurance um, to support it, uh, then if you're going to, anything that you run through, we're going to take 10% off it as a user fee, but that's it. So you can grow this business as, as big an entity, as complicated as you want. You can hire additional people. You can do all of that, or you can just, you can just work your jobs through the drone on demand app, you know, right from your phone or your tablet and make, you know, three, $600 a day or potentially more entirely up to you. Um, Jonathan, and just uh, remember guys right now, if I have time, I'll get to the chat box, but right now I'm just going through the Q and A cause that's keeping me busy enough. Um, and as far as landing page and, and, uh, search engine optimization, that's something that we have been discussing offering down the line, uh, you know, like having a, a web page template for, and you can put your own branding and that sort of stuff, but that's something that's, that's not, uh, don't expect that to see that. <clears throat> as you're finishing up the course, that's more forward looking. Uh, David, I greatly appreciate your extensive complete support network uh, for my drone small business. That's very unique. Thank you, David. Thanks for recognizing that. You're welcome. Anonymous, uh, are we able to use your platform to service outside clients? Yes, just answer that. And if that's what you do, um, great, please do. We just keep a nominal 10% as a user fee. Uh, and that, that also will cover, our insurance will cover you in that situation as well. Um, after the first year, how much does the AD cost? Uh, after the first year, the insurance that we'll sell you will be $1,400 a year. You can go outside of that, that's great. Anybody else is gonna charge in excess of $2,300 a year. Uh, and then the AD cloud, after the first year, it's right at around 20 bucks a month, it's 250 bucks a year. Um, Karen, uh, if you can, if you can only fly in line of sight, what is the longest UAV trip in distance. Ah, so that's something you learn about when you go through the course. I think it's three miles is the longest the regulation will allow. So even if you can see it beyond three miles, which is kind of a, that'd be a mean feat, the uh, regulation will let you do it. And it's because of regulations like that that you don't see last mile delivery as one of the use cases we're training on. Um, because the, the way the regulation is yet it is, it is written, it just really isn't commercially viable. Um, in any, any scalable way. Not yet, but it will be. And when it does, we will offer it. Uh, Garrett, do you have current demand by sector based on location? Yes, Garrett, we do. Um, and that's in the opportunity map. We haven't released it yet, um, but we have it. Um, we've had it for a little while. Uh, I don't know when Barry and the rest of the team are gonna decide to send that out. Right now, the map, it's a little cumbersome to use. It is usable, but it's a little bit cumbersome. It's in an Excel format, um, but it will be out to you long before you get to step three and have to decide what to, uh, what to focus on. Uh, Garrett, because I know you, um, I can't do this for everyone, guys. I'm sorry, I just don't have time. But because I know you, if you want to contact me directly after the meeting, we can go look at whatever county that you're, that you're talking about, and, uh, and I'll tell you what it says. Sorry, guys. Sometimes it pays, sometimes it pays to be friends. Uh, David Swanson, uh, how much do the drones you supply cost and how will it be paid for? I think we answered that several times over. 
one will part uh, 1.9 be available. I don't know, but all of step one will be available in, in a couple of weeks or less. Um, Jim Bartholomew, I am also currently in part one training, haven't flown drones before. Is there a practical hands-on opportunity to fly drones during the course? Okay, we talked about that, Jim. And by the way, anybody who, who came in late, uh, this is being recorded and we'll go ahead and send out a link to the recording to everybody who's registered um, in case you missed anything at the beginning. But my voice is giving out, so I'm gonna just go over the, not gonna repeat the questions that I've already answered. Um, how is the actual hands-on equipment training accomplished? Uh, yeah, we talked about that, anonymous. Uh, David, oh, I live in Connecticut, Hartford. Hi, David. Plan to work within about 100 miles radius of where I live. Great. Uh, Richard, what's the average cost of a commercial drone used for these operations? We talked about that, 4,000 to 4,500. How and where do you take the FAA 107 test? Okay, good. <clears throat> there are hundreds of locations throughout the country. Um, and when you get to that point uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, uh, at the end of uh, step one, it'll direct you how to find them. Um, there's hundreds of them, so you will not have to travel far. Uh, and you just go there and take the test. It's like going to the DMV, except for you don't have to wait in line. Uh, a lot of lot of little local airports have what are called FBOs, um, and a lot of those are training centers, and they're everywhere. Uh, David Aldi, I started the course in September. I'm also new going through the non-pod section. What's past 107? Is there a schedule for hands? Yeah, I think we just said said that right. All right. Uh, what kind of contract do we sign when jumping on board with you? Uh, there's a non-compete, non-circumvent contract. You know, it's you know pretty standard stuff. Um, it's it basically it just says that you can't you can't get make a contact or a business relation at the lead through the drone on demand app and then circumvent the app by going ahead and, and working for them alone. If you discover the person outside of the app. That's great, you know, no problem. Uh, but you can't show up for a job and say, hey, I'll do it for 20 bucks less if you just go ahead and cancel this now. That kind of thing. Uh, Jonathan, I didn't get the price on the insurance. Could you repeat? Yes, uh, insurance in the open market, 2,300 a year. Buy it through Aqualine, $1,400 a year. Uh, David, I started the question of memory. Yeah, okay, I've seen that a few times. Ah, aha, <laughs> yeah. Uh, George, uh, well, I need to purchase a laptop going forward. I've had problems with classes on the phone. Yeah, not on the phone. Definitely, you can't do it on the phone, George. You can't take a college, you know, essentially a college level course uh, on a phone. You need to have at least a tablet or, or bigger. Um, so tablet, desktop, laptop. Uh, David, is that $4,500 drone applicable to all six business operations? Yes, the sensor can vary. Um, you might require like a, a LIDAR, uh, sorry, not a LIDAR, a FLIR uh, type camera, but that's right around $500 total. So it's a, a, that is a, a very solid um, uh, estimate uh, to work off of. Uh, Carolyn, do you currently, do the currently certified 107 pilots begin with part one? Yes, they begin with part one. <clears throat> and Carolyn, that's no different than what an airline does when they have a pilot come in that's already certified to fly the type of airplane that that airline flies. Um, they want to make sure that you're trained. They need to make sure. In fact, the FAA requires it that you are trained to their standard. And we do the same uh, because our training goes well above and beyond what you need to get the 107 certificate. Um, as you know, as already being 107 certified, um, it's, it's, it's not, a, not a high bar um, and it's, it's too low if you wanna represent the Aqualine brand. So you go, through the, you go through the program too. But you don't have to take the 107 exam, of course, that would be ridiculous. Um, do I have to go to a testing center to take the FAA test? Yes, Angela, you have to go. If you are not a, not a current um, um, aircraft pilot or if you are not a uh, part 107 pilot already, then you have to go to the FAA test. If you are a pilot, rather uh, ATP, part 61, 120, 135, and you are current, you know, having a biannual flight review or, or some type of check ride, which you will be if you work for an airline, then you do not have to go to the FAA test. 
Uh, Jeremy, uh, I understand I would benefit buying a box store model gain flight experience uh, or would that be a waste of time? Uh, Jeremy, it can't hurt. It's not necessary, not by a long shot. Some people have done it. More experience is always better than less. It's up to you. Um, if the cost isn't really an issue, um, then I'd say go ahead and do it. Um, because like I said, it's only a positive. But nobody should feel like they need to need to run out and do that in order to be successful. Uh, Jim, how mobile will this business be? How hard is it to move all equipment needed to complete a job, say, between Charlotte and Phoenix for different times of year? It's not hard at all. It's like carrying a big toolbox. That's it. Uh, John, impressive. Are you hiring in the Hartford area? We are, John, for a variety of positions. If you want to go ahead and send uh, me your resume, um, I'm going to go ahead and type this in the chat, guys. And this is for everybody, too. If there's anybody thinks of any questions, send it to me. Uh, send the resume to me with a cover letter. Um, All right, so it's R as in Romeo Nunneman at AqualineDrones.com. Um, if anybody thinks of any other questions or wants to send me a resume. Um, also, um, if that's too hard, you can send it to the general and somebody will answer you. Uh, general email inquiry, um, info at AqualineDrones.com. And that is in the chat section right there. Uh, okay, moving along. Make it a good cover letter to stand out because we are getting we are getting a lot of resumes. Uh, anonymous attendee, what state do you register my LLC? Whatever state you tell us you want it registered, anonymous. Um, are we able to use your platform to service outside clients? Yes, we've answered that. Uh, Joseph. Joseph, I wonder if you, uh, I had a friend in high school in New Jersey called Ronnie Antonelli. I was wondering if you guys have any, any relation. Um, I started back in September, loving the class so far. I am super excited, especially after hearing a lot of the material you covered today. The future is looking bright. Yes, Joseph, thank you. You guys are, honestly, you are making my day with all of the strong feedback. Um, I really, really appreciate it. James, our, uh, our LLC will be in Connecticut. Is it a problem taking jobs in other states? Will we have to register? No, you don't, James, unless you work there on a regular basis. Like the previous question about moving from the East Coast down to Arizona, and we will cover that when we get there. I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds, but that would be a situation where you would have to register as a foreign entity in one of those states. If you have regular operations, regular and sustained operations, um, if you're just kind of passing through and doing a job here or there, you generally don't have to register as a foreign entity. That is an excellent question. All right. Um, whoops. Gosh, this service has, you know what? Service has a little, little bit to be desired here. Uh, Alfonso, do you buy back the drone if you want to exit the business? Yes, based on a depreciation schedule, Alfonso, we give you that option. Uh, do you have a, have you got an FAA part 137? No. Uh, let's see. What lead time is appropriate in placing the order for my Aqualine drone? Given the timeline start of early spring for the drone on demand. Very good question, David. Um, we've got your drone earmarked, okay? The first 2000 drones that are rolling off the assembly line are, go, are being earmarked for, or are earmarked for Flight to the Future graduates, uh, which includes you. Um, so you don't, you don't have to worry about being uh, on, a, on a wait list. Um, that's also why in, when our uh, website is revamped here in the very, very near future, um, it's more of an e-commerce type, type of website from what it is now, um, we're gonna be taking pre-orders for drones because all those people that buy the drones off the website are gonna be at the back of the line from all the Flight to the Future graduates. We wanna get you guys and girls, you men and women out there, earning um, as soon as possible without any undue delay. Um, 
is someone limited to a specific geographical area to do a mission example fly from cali to hawaii to do a mission no you're not um <clears throat> your business registration you know will, will be limited as far as onboarding you know down the road but of course it doesn't apply to you guys here if you go ahead and physically make the effort to physically relocate to a different location you turn on the app and it's going to populate with the with the jobs uh, in that area uh, there's a guy in United, he retired maybe 10 months ago or so. I tell a story all the time. Um, he and his wife bought a Airstream and they're, they're traveling around the country chasing the nice weather through the seasons. Well, now he's going through the program and once he's, he's finished and gets the drone, he's gonna fly it you know, wherever they are when he feels like, feels like working, making some money, he's gonna turn on the app and do it. That's fine. Um, but what we didn't want happening and what you can't do um, is say turning on the app and looking at the entire state and the entire region and the entire country and seeing where there's a bunch of high paying jobs and, and saying, aha, you know, doing your, your kind of recon that way and then going ahead and hopping on a plane or hopping in a car to go in there and, and, and eat up and eat into that business. Um, but if you go through the effort of actually locating yourself to a new area, um, that's significant effort and enough, we give you access to those jobs. We're not worried about widespread competition in these situations like that for the people who are existing in that area. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, is there a heat map showing the people on board now? Uh, I live in Connecticut near you, you wanna make sure the market isn't saturated. Uh, no, we don't have a heat map, but we do, we do know where everybody is. Um, and don't worry, um, there isn't anywhere, certainly nowhere in, in Connecticut or really in the Northeast, there isn't anywhere that's in danger of being saturated with the first few thousand people that we're, we are running through now, okay? Going into next year, you will see some areas and you can you can kind of figure out where they're going to be. Uh, there, there's areas with a lot of drone activity, uh, areas around Phoenix, Southern Florida, areas in Texas that have airlines bases that have, you know, have furloughed a lot of people. Right. That's where you can. That's where we expect these are going to be the first markets where people are waitlisted. But anybody who's getting in now or getting in, in a few weeks, trust me, don't worry about it. There is strong demand where 2,000 pilots across the country is, is not even a drop in the bucket relative to the amount of demand that's out there today. And of course, we, we, that demand is growing even without our efforts and we're gonna pour gas on that fire um, ourselves. Uh, this webinar including all Q&A? Yes, I think it is. I think so. Huh. Larissa Hayden, Larissa is the one, <laughs> Larissa is our, our uh, uh, manager of marketing and engagements, Alyssa Hayden, and she developed that PowerPoint. Uh, so hi, Larissa. Don't forget to mention the survey at the end. I did forget, Larissa. <clears throat> if you want to mention the holiday special, all new students get pilot trip pricing at $7.99 up until December 24th. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Uh, okay, great. As if there wasn't enough value already. Um, it, it's $7.99, I guess, for everybody. Um, uh, I would say if that's the case, then anybody who's signing up, make sure they select the success kit for pilots. That would make it a lot easier uh, for us. Um, there is a survey at the end of it. Um, please take it. Uh, Larissa will really appreciate it. And Larissa asked me to say that if you take it at the end, there's a surprise, but I don't think that's ethical. There's really no surprise. So just, but please take it. It's good for our marketing research. We can find out how effective these are and what type of uh, uh, people are inquiring about it. Um, Eric, is there a basic business training step four? Yes. Uh, Kenny, thanks, you just answered. You're welcome. Anonymous, what's the process for last steps of section if I already have a 107 certificate? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you, you go through 107. We're going to capture your information, you know, at some point, and we're capturing, you know, everybody's information um, specific to the 107. You'll have to put that in there, but you'll flow right into step two, and I, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Joseph, uh, what will a second specialization cost? Great, two hundred dollars if you're going to go back through, Joseph, um, and repeat step three and step three only. Uh, how do you plan to do ag operations about 137? I spoke with somebody in the sales department. KT, well, again, that falls into those issues of something that coming in that wouldn't go directly to the <coughs> directly to the um, directly to the app. That would be something that we would process, figure out the, the resources and the people on the ground that we need and contact you directly. 
Uh, and they mentioned you would be doing spraying. Yeah, we would be doing, we will be doing spraying. Um, but again, that's something that's gonna fall outside of what's gonna flash on the phone. Uh, where do I buy my AD shirt? Okay, Keith, tell you what, you sign up and you send me an email and I'll make sure you get a t-shirt for free, okay? Uh, Patrick, if you haven't signed up already, and I think you did, Keith. Um, Patrick started September, I'm a dual licensed real estate agent in Florida, South Carolina. I'm excited to start out within that industry. There's tremendous potential. Yes, Patrick, you are absolutely right. There is. Uh, also, is Spartacus an AI tailored to our UAV business? Yes, Spartacus is. Think of it as like a Siri, Siri's experience um, or a Google Assistant experience tied into every aspect of your UAV, uh, of your UAV, UAV business. Uh, Skyler, uh, current flight to the future participant. I have an FAA UAS registration number for my current hobby RC flying. Can I use this number on my commercial drones? So, or do I need a different one? Uh, I think you need a unique one and we're gonna assist you with that process, Skylar. But to be honest with you, I don't know anything beyond that. You caught me off guard. I haven't gotten that question before. Um, I just don't know, but we'll figure it out together. Uh, Skylar, current flight to the future participant. Yeah. I'm sorry, we just answered that. And Kyle. Is there a required number of jobs one would need to do within a given time period in order to maintain currencies qualification? No, there isn't, uh, Kyle. <clears throat> um, we haven't uh, discussed going ahead and putting one on you or any anybody else for that matter. We're confident that the automation and the AI will be sufficient to keep you safe. Of course, the FAA does require that um, every two years you you take a recurrency test. It's a written test, and you know we'll help you with that as well. Uh, are there any discounts or additional benefits available for active duty military members? I'm sorry, anonymous attendee, there is not. Keep in mind that there's over $4,000 $4, of value at the price. Uh, right now, I just found out until 24th, everybody's getting for $7.99. Uh, and there really is no more value to be found on that. That is, it's already a tremendous loss leader for us. Um, you know, the payoff for, for uh, Aqualine is when you go out and start earning a significant amount of money through the drone on demand services app, um, we you know we just can't cut it any more than we already have. Um, okay, chat. Let me go through this real quick. Uh, hello, hello, Jonathan. Just started the course early this month. Informative, engaging. Thank you, uh, Bradley. Cost a cloud per year. Answer that. I'm French. Yes, we answer that. Also been in the program since the alpha launch. Great. So excited. Also, any leasing options on the drones versus financing? Soft rollout rocks. <laughs> Thanks, Bradley. I'm glad you feel that way. Uh, no, I know on the website it does talk about leasing. Um, early on, we were, we were considering doing that. We decided that ownership would be a better way to go. Um, it, not in small part because that encourages uh, further you know, responsibility on the point of the operator. Um, so what we did is we, we, we um, got away from the um, uh, leasing and put in a financing option uh, on the drill uh, with, with a buyback option too from the depreciation schedule. <clears throat> so it really, it gives you pretty much all the advantages of a lease. Uh, current uh, Flight to Future student, amazing online classes, awesome. Start in September and the pace did slow, but I feel it's worth the wait. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I also start in September and agree we will be the first class to benefit making it worth the wait. Thank you. Um, does AD help with marketing of my LLC? It helps with the marketing. It handles all of the marketing with the Drone On Demand Services app. However, your own LLC is, if, that, if you want to market it, that is your responsibility. Tools are coming down the pipe. That is the plan. Um, but that is something that is in, in, in the future. Don't expect to have access to that right away when you finish. Uh, yes, Larissa, I mentioned survey. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, you have to be current within the last 24 months. That is correct. Um, how and where can I take the FAA 107? We'll, we'll guide you to the appropriate testing centers when you're ready as part of the program. Uh, Ian. I'd like to say that the people at Aqualine Drones have been awesome with keeping us up to date on the program. We started in September. 
Mr. Keck was great in talking with me about being a commercial pilot, making the switch has helped a ton. Ian, I will be sure to tell Tom Keck that. Thank you. Um, Tom and I rib each other a lot, a lot. It's kind of like a thing, but so it's going to kill me to have to tell him something nice, but I will tell him. Um, where did you get the info on currency within the last 12 months? It's on the FAA website if you want to check it out. Um, from the FAA and also had a long convo on the phone with Mr. Keck at Aquiline. Um, see if I can find you uh, a link, Garrett. Okay. Um, oh, on LinkedIn. Yes, yes, Garrett, you can. You can find me. Anybody can find me on LinkedIn if they want. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, FAA dronezone.fa.gov is a good start. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that and telling everybody. Uh, FAA drone zone dot FAA dot gov it's where the FAA has a tremendous amount of their information uh, specific to drones and part 107. Um, also from our lessons, iacra.faa.gov. Great. Okay, that's my contact information. If you're looking for a way to practice flying drones while taking the course, <clears throat> look into PC based RC flight sims such as real flight. They're excellent tools. Yes, they are excellent tools. However, I really recommend just using our simulator, which is going to be available uh, uh, very soon. It's part of step three <clears throat> from PA, not directly related. Okay, thanks, Joe. Uh, good point, Skylar. DJI also has a really good sim. Okay. Um, this is a great program. Looking forward to starting this dynamic gig. Thank you. You're welcome, Jose. Uh, Skylar, the recorded commercial ID are different. Uh, I have a DJ Inspire. Uh, where'd it go? I have a DJ Inspire that I had to get a new ID for part 17. Okay, great. Thank you for helping with that answer. Um, from Andy, will only the drones through AD be compatible with AD Cloud and DOD, or can DJ and other manufacturer of drones be based? Sorry if you already mentioned it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I did. No, uh, it can't. Um, if we were able to in order to be able to uh, uh, integrate a third party, they have to give us their intellectual property. It's called their development kit. So that we know how the two, so we can develop an API so that the two can communicate to each other. That's never gonna happen, number one. And number two, we wouldn't do it if we could anyway, uh, because we have no way of doing quality assurance, especially when it comes to once it's been deployed <clears throat> with DJI drone or anybody else. And it's absolutely true. DJI makes a very, very nice product. They, have, they do have good quality insurance. But uh, Google the Drone Security Act of 2019 and start learning about how short the days are for DJI as far as commercial oper operations in US airspace. Um, there is for a number of reasons and there's no point debating whether or not they're valid, uh, but the mood and the political support, the political temperature is very strong for pushing DJI out of the US airspace is certainly for commercial operations and only having US operators or um, operators, uh, sorry, manufacturers and manufacturers from proof countries uh, operating in our airspace. <clears throat> and that is happening. Um, so, it, and that is why we invested very heavily in domestic manufacturing. Um, DGI is on its way out, believe it or not. Hard to believe, but it is. Uh, if you read this, Ian Frazier, what will support be like for parts and service for the drones? Like I said, the idea is to have you flying. So we'll send you the parts for anything that's user serviceable. If it's something more involved than that, and we have to open up the, you know, take some special tools or knowledge. We send you a loaner so that you can continue to earn and, and you ship us back our drone, we fix it, and then we swap. Um, uh, you're welcome, Ian. What's the email for the T-shirt? Okay, just send it. Uh, uh, send it to me, George. Um, R. Nunneman. I'll type it in here again in the chat section at the bottom. Uh, R. Nunneman at AquilineDrones.com. R. Nunneman at AquilineDrones.com. Just go ahead and send it to me. And if you forget that, info at aqualinedrones.com. And just mention, mention what I promised and I will get it to you. Uh, and anybody else who wants one after they sign up, but sign up first. Uh, info at aqualinedrones.com. Great. Um, okay, thanks, uh, email. That's a great point at DJI. Thanks, Ian. Um, okay, guys.
Um, that's everything. We ran a little over, no problem. Sorry, I went through quickly at the end, um, but there's, there's a, I've got a ton of things to do and um, I just got to get to it. So you guys asked fantastic questions. Thanks for uh, get, hopping on this. Please do the survey. Uh, if not for me, do it for Larissa. And um, going forward, if anybody has any questions that they think of, um, go ahead and reach out to me directly or go through that general info at aquilinedrones.com and uh, I will get them answered. Okay, guys and girls, thank you so much. I hope everybody signs up. I know a lot of the people who are on here already have. Thank you for the comments. And I know a lot who are on this webinar will in the very near future, in which case I want to say thank you for seeing the value in Flight to the Future and what we're doing here. Uh, we are really revolutionizing uh, what's already a revolutionary industry. Uh, we're doing it better and we're doing it for less than everyone else. And I just uh, heartfelt thank you for seeing the value in the program and wanting to be a part of, uh, of our mission and what we're doing. We only get one shot to get this right, guys. If we, if we, if we don't do it right, if the industry as a whole doesn't do it right and the public's attention or, or sorry um, opinion of uavs sours it'll set us back another 10 years so we're taking an aviation mindset we're moving quickly but we're moving smartly intelligently and cautiously just like we would operating an airline uh you know operating a jet uh in an airline schedule um so it makes all the difference it really does nobody else is bringing this aviation mindset other than aquiline Nobody else is maintaining control of the entire ecosystem to ensure safety, which is the theme of, 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 aviation, of uh, Drone Safety Awareness Week, uh, safety and, uh, and professionalism. So uh, that's it. Take care, everybody. Uh, uh, Larissa will send out the uh, email uh, link uh, with the webinar. It usually takes a few hours for Zoom to process it. And uh, please share it with anybody that you think might be interested. Uh, like us uh, on our official uh, Facebook page, and follow us on LinkedIn for those that are LinkedIn and stay abreast of uh, updates, particularly when the business side of offline drones and any announcements as they come out. Everybody have a great night. Okay. Take care.